I'll give you the floor first, my friend. What do you think about the 2023 season for our good friends out there in Norman, Oklahoma? So our Oklahoma listeners know that we completely eviscerated them when we were talking about expectations for 2024 and the SEC schedule that they were dealt that is not favorable at all. They are going to get bludgeoned to death in 2024, depending on the momentum coming from this this past season. But Blake, I got to be honest, the more that I dig into this roster, I, I dig into their their schedule, their capabilities. I'm in on Brent Venables. I, I think that what Brent Venables dealt with last year, a roster that was pulled apart by Lincoln Riley leaving, it is so freaking hard with the atmosphere that was surrounding that program after Lincoln left, the, the negativity after Lincoln Riley left, the position that he placed him in, it was going to be so hard to be competitive in the first year. And to deal with Dylan Gabriel's injury for as long as he did and having to swap quarterbacks in and out and deal with different guys at the quarterback position, it was going to be really freaking hard to win more than six games. They went six and seven. And, and, and here's where I see this. Florida State last year finished as one of the hottest teams in college football. And there is a reason why we are talking about them as one of the best you teams think, in college you football. You think that they finished as one of the hottest teams in the country last year? Florida State. Oh, I thought you said Oklahoma. No, 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 no. Florida State finished as one of the hottest teams. But, but my point does go in line with that. They put up a damn good fight up against Florida State. That was a battle and a fight that they took to them. Not saying that Oklahoma is going to be a top 10 team in, in college football. They're good enough to be ranked for the entirety of the year, and they're good enough to finish in the top four of the Big 12 in 2023, maybe even in the top two. Here's my thing with and, – and look, I have tried to pronounce this kid's name all day long, the edge rusher that they got in recruiting – Desan McCullough, or are you talking about um, and uh, and Diva Ju? No. His his brother Adiba, was just a Diva War just, or something. I, I'm you, Joe. I'm so bad with names. Anyway, the five star edge. Okay, I'm just gonna call him Debo. All right, six four two forty five star top ten overall recruit. They got Peyton Bowen. They got Makari Vickers, I thought was a really good safety that was underrated. Uh, Adabware is Adibuare. his brother. Was, it go. was just in the draft. Oh, oh so, well, so that means that he's got a little bit of a bloodline. Yes. Okay. I, look, I think that there's even a, a potential, Joe, that uh, Jackson Arnold could – because, look, Milton was hurt last year. You know, look, could Jackson Arnold be the guy that everybody thinks that he is? But then I look at the portal, Okay. And when I look at them in the portal and I look at what they did, now they were ninth in the country in the portal. They did they did some good things. They didn't do some great things. But they went and got, like you talked about, McCullough. They got uh, Thompson from uh, uh, Texas. They mm -hmm. got Walter Rouse, Trace Ford. They somewhat tried to – they had more guys coming in, is what I'm trying to say, quality dudes to come in than they had leave. I also believe – that they are better coached all around now than they were under Lincoln Riley. Why, what do I mean by that? Offensively, I still think that they could be a really damn good team, okay? I think that offensively, scheme-wise, they were lost because guys just didn't give a shit, and it hurt them immensely. I also believe defensively they got a lot better. Now, what people forget is, okay, Getting after the quarterback was actually somewhat a little bit of a specialty for them. They got after the quarterback a lot. They just continued to get hurt. If there's one team that will be this year, we're back. In that conference, I think it would be Oklahoma before Texas because I still believe as a collective unit, they are better than Texas. I don't trust Sark. I don't trust what they do defensively. I trust Brent Finnables defensively. I trust what the Wizard, their OC, is doing. Mm. I just think that they will be better and better coached. And quite honestly, man, they're killing it on the recruiting trail, too. Like, they're trying to get the kid David Stone. 
And look, I think Peyton Bowen could be a, a day one starter, like the five star safety. Like that kid could be a day one starter. Yes. So, yes. Like, with that being said, they are getting the pieces. They are getting the dudes. Can they deliver when it matters most? Right. And the, the one aspect of this here, too, is the issue last year wasn't their offense, which one would assume with Brent Venables being a defensive minded coach that, that that would be the issue. Jeff Levy, with all the limitations, again, with the injuries to Dylan Gabriel, to inconsistencies on the offensive side of the football, frankly, talent limitations. They, they, they had one good receiver in Marvin Mims, and like that was about it. And Eric, Eric Ray was a fine running back, and he did some good things, and they utilized him well. But Jeff Levy had that offense firing when everybody was on the field, or most of those guys were on the field. I know that the offense is going to play at a good enough level that if the defense follows – they will be a tough team to beat. And I, I think that, as you talked about, it is it, it was going to be so hard for Brent Venables, and I gave him a ton of shit last year. It was going to be so hard for Brent Venables to pick that team up, to have the right bodies in place, to, to stand up and fight on a week-to-week -week basis at the level that he needed him to. He didn't have any of the defensive line recruits that, that he was used to at Clemson. There was no Miles Murphy or Brian Brzee or Ruka Roro Roro on that defensive line. No Dexter hey, Lawrence. Ten times fast. Hocus Pocus is going to appear. Uh, just wait till we do the Clemson preview. He didn't have those bodies. He's starting to get those bodies. He got a couple of them in the portal. He got Adebore. McCullough's going to be a really good edge rusher. Once he gets his bodies, gets those dudes in place, man, this defense is going to be one of the best defenses in the Big 12, and then eventually they're going to transition to the SEC. Which isn't saying much, okay? Like, and I don't Exactly, exactly. Isn't saying much. That's my point. And that I think that, correct. So to add on to you, and I, I agree with you here, to that point, they don't have to do a whole hell of a lot to get back to where they want to be. Dude, I think they could be a 9-10 win team. I, I really do believe – because, again – from a from a talent standpoint, mm -hmm. there may like who's better than them in that conference. I'm not saying that they could go to. I, I'm not saying that they could be Georgia, Alabama, LSU. No, I'm not Tennessee, Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State. I'm not saying any of that. I don't think that they can. But when it comes to the conference that they're in. I just really don't know if there's anybody that's got more talent than they do. And I think that they're really well coached, which now I just sit here and say, well, damn, are, can, <laughs> uh, are they going to win the Big 12? And God bless it. If they do, I hope that they're not in the playoffs. They are not ready. They are not. No, they have no. Talent, yeah, but they're not no. that good. They, they, I mean, oh, man, they would get their asses kicked worse than TCU. They're going to get I'm their sorry, asses kicked in 2024 when yeah. they got to – like their SEC schedule is – Oh, brutal. Right. We And we don't want to go too far down that, that 2020. Bro, your boy Arnold, I, I know, but, man, if that's the first year that he starts, God bless that kid. I mean, if he steps up and nuts up, man, that, like that's a huge, Joe, huge challenge for him to step up and nut Joe, up to. Joe, I'm just telling you. Okay, but here's the thing. To keep it on 2023, though, okay, Blake, okay. I, I, I think that the only roster that's more physically talented than them is Texas. But the, the point that I agree with you on, and that is very crucial, the gap isn't massive, and one team is a lot better coached, is way better coached. I trust, and I know that we don't have enough examples of it, I think that Oklahoma can get their guys right more than Texas does. Uh, I agree, man. I'm not, I, again, we talked about this, and when we do the, the Texas deep dive, which will probably be soon, I'm not scared of Texas. I think Oklahoma beats Texas this year. We need to be realistic with ourselves. I'm tired of this I hype. agree. Uh, dude, I agree. Look, so many, so many eggs are going in that Texas basket. Look, Texas fans are going to think that I hate them. Okay. Okay. You, you can't, they cannot stop a bloody nose in the back end. Dude, oh, I... we, got we got better defense. We got better. No, you got SEC guys that left that could not cut it here. Dude, I was watching. So I, I do a lot of film Hawaii evals. Do you, you watch Hawaii Five O? I don't. I, I was. I do a lot of film evals. I do a lot of breakdowns. So I have notes on guys to to talk about them, okay. uh, and I do a couple of guys a night. 
I was watching who's supposed to be their best interior defensive lineman, Devondre Sweat. He stinks. The 355-pound kid. Dude, he's, he's 355 pounds. I'm watching him get blown off the ball. If that's the best guy that you guys have on your defensive line, he got popped off. Of his, his pads popped up in the air against Alabama. If he can't compete against Alabama and that offensive line that was one of the worst that we've seen the past couple of years, they're not stopping anyone. Yeah. That, that's supposed to be your run stuff in big body defensive tackle. And he's also completely misused. I don't trust that defense. That's what it comes down to. If things somehow work with them offensively and things suddenly pick up and they're and they're putting up 40 points a game, I don't see bodies on the defensive side of the football for them to, to, to stop people. Well, see, and here's another thing. And, and look, I, I looked at their schedule and I have it pulled up here. Okay? okay. They got Arkansas State. They have SMU. They have Tulsa and Cincinnati. I don't think Cincinnati is going to be good because they're replacing their head coach. They lost way – Way too much. Then in Norman, they got Iowa State, and I will never pick Matt Campbell to win a game, ever. I will never come on this show and say Matt Campbell's going to win a game. I don't trust him. I will never trust a guy that wears his hat like this. I'm not doing it. You are a psychopath, (laughs) a serial killer, if you wear your hat like that. I am convinced I am a hat collector. I have almost 300 hats, and only my wife gets on to me because – I only wear like the same three, but uh, on the shows, but I am a hat collector. I'm not picking him. So even with that, so Joe, you, they could be four. No going into Texas on October the 7th. Get this. They got UCF at home. They go to Kansas. They got Oklahoma state who lost a lot of talent. A lot. They got to replace Spencer Sanders. So much Joe. I, are they going to – are they going to – is Oklahoma going to go undefeated, in my opinion? No, they're not. They're going to win nine games. They're going to win nine games, man. And their schedule is, is softer than Charmin tissue paper. There is not a single reason why that they shouldn't win nine games. So th- here's a great way to end, end the, the conversation on this deep dive. We're propping you guys up right now, Oklahoma fans. We're talking you guys up big time. We're, we're saying that this team is going to be good. But there's a caveat with that. You better win nine games. If you don't win oh. nine games, that is a failure oh, of a season. He's on the hot seat. He's on the hot seat. Joe, if he comes out here, if, if, if they go, and let me just reread this again. If they lose Arkansas State, SMU, Tulsa, Cincinnati, Iowa State, Texas, UCF, Kansas, Oklahoma State, West Virginia. I think that BYU game in Provo. I think that, that that's tough. tough. That's going to be tough. And then they got TCU and, and Norman. Dog. Joe, if there's not nine wins in there, Brent Venables might get fired. He sh- I mean, he should. That, again, that is a very favorable schedule. You know With everything that he did. You know what I say? Please, sweet Jesus, give us that schedule. Like, this is what I just don't think that people understand. Like, if I'm an LSU fan, if I'm an Alabama fan, if I'm a Georgia fan, if I'm a Tennessee fan, please, Jesus, give us that schedule. 